those events. So, we'll have more for questions and answers. Thanks. I'm going to give the floor to uh, Michel Kipimba from uh, Okapi Radio. Michel Kipimba has question on security aspects. Please. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, Michel Kipimba Boy from uh, Radio Okapi. My question is for Mr. Emmanuel Macron. Mr. President, the Congolese memory retains in a French way in a fresh way that France played a relevant role in the Rwandan genocide and especially in the entry of uh, FDLA into the DRC in Operation the Quas. You remember that there was a humanitarian corridor. You brought in armies with weapons and uh, ammunition despite the opposition of the Congolese authorities. Today, the DRC has already recorded more than 10 million deaths. We are victims of our solidarity. How does France personally intend to solve this problem because you were there and it was you who brought in the uh, soldiers? How do you intend to repair the damage caused to the police population? That is the first aspect of my question. The second is, since all the reports of the experts of the United Nations, Amnesty International and others attest to the thesis of Rwandan aggression and the cover of the M23, we note that France is not warm enough to condemn Rwanda and to ask for sanctions since you chair the UN Security Council, and yet you do so aggressively against Russia. Why this lethargy on the Congolese side? Do you feel more guilty for the death of 800,000 Rwandans than for 10 million Congolese? In addition, you gave $20 million to Rwanda, an aggressor country of the DRC. Can the DRC still continue to consider France as a friend? Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for your patience. I said in my introductory remarks, and uh, I repeat it to you, with much more clarity that France is uh, the ally of uh, the DRC and uh, will continue to be so. I said clearly uh, we see the security situation today, condemning any action of looting, balkanization, and uh, threat to sovereignty. I'm ready to open all the files of history. I did it with Rwanda, and if it is President Chisekedi's wish, I'm ready for there to be a commission of historians who are ready to assign responsibilities to each other. You recall the dark history of the region. France has assumed to open or its books and have it written by historians in a completely independent way. I believe that you have made a shortcut which is neither historical nor fair between the role that France was able to play in the dramatic situation that I mentioned, the war, the second war, with millions of deaths, the seriousness of which I recall. So, I reject the shortcut you have made and the responsibility that uh, could be made France today because I'm not I am for all the truth, nothing but the truth, but I'm not here to take all the burden. I know how to take mine, it's already good. So yes, for a commission of historians to do this work, if it seems useful to the president to give the facts, then let's be clear. What was the situation in 1994? Several countries of uh, the third region, not just one, but several, have entered your country and several rebel groups have flourished there, extracting several mineral riches that belong to your country. Since 1994, and sorry to say it in such a crude way, it is not the fault of France, but you have not been able to ensure your sovereignty, neither military nor security for administrative no administrative of your country. It is also a reality. We must not look for culprit outside this affair. So we are in a situation which has led to absolute uh, tragedies 
uh, to this uh, second war, to millions of deaths that we must not forget, and also to the necessity, and it is a responsibility that must be done here, and it is not up to France to do so, to put in place real justice, transitional justice, which is the key so that uh, those who may have killed are judged. Sometimes they are still there, and they are still living, they have positions of responsibility. How do you expect they to be trust and lasting peace when justice has not been passed? To not take your friends for something that depends on you then. This is also a reality, but very clearly, the 30 year situation has taken an unacceptable turn, that's it. So yes, to tell the truth about the story, no to take all the burden, and if we are clear, let's be clear until the end, let's assume the responsibilities including the Congolese responsibilities, the responsibility of the sub-region, build a solid army, build security around the state throughout your territory to all the whole place, pass transitional justice so that you do not still have culprits and war criminals still in positions of responsibility on the ground, be intractable with the neighbors. Uh, uh, when they come to loot your riches and uh, will be on your side. I can't be any clearer on this. We talked about the long-term solution with President Tshisekedi. Clearly, it is all about having the capacity to hold the world territory and the discourse of truth with the world region because we can't stay on a, an economic model which consists of the wealth taken here being able to be used in some way to ensure uh, the economic security of your neighbors. To this must be added a duty which is just as important, the responsibility I mentioned very quickly earlier, of being able to respond to the terrorist threat from the ADF, which are groups which do not have regional boundaries and which threatens your territory and can even get along, in my opinion, in the sub-regions, uh, sub-region and other African countries with terrible consequences and these terrorist Islamist movements, we also need them food. It is a question of national security. And then about the M23 and the sanction, France has always been clear and constantly condemned the M23 and all those who support it. I'm here so that uh, everyone takes the responsibilities, including Rwanda today, the region assumes its responsibilities by putting on the table uh, the escalation plan. It is in its first steps, and moreover, it marks a convergence between two mechanisms which were separated at the start, and then they began to operate. In any case, I look at them with great esteem, friendship, if I may say so, and support, and we agree, including with President Tshisekedi, to apply to this plan and give peace a chance. So we have the opportunity to hopefully resolve the M23 issue. We also have the opportunity to treat in doing so. If this plan with its chronogram are applied, finally, the question of the FDLA, I'm going to be very clear, it's not today that we have to shake everything up. Today we have to give a chance to this plan, the, to Angolan mediation, to the commitment of each other to the results, but I'll be just as clear. Those who will obstruct this plan, and we'll see it on the ground since within the framework of the mediation there is a verification mechanism and the Angolan control which could say who respects and who does not respect with independent observers. Those who stand in the way of this plan knows that they are exposing themselves to what they are exposing themselves to, including sanctions. Thank you. We now have uh, Mrs. Uh, Leroux, Valérie, from uh, Agence France Press, AFP. Yes, uh, my first question is for uh, Mr. President Tshisekedi. 
Are you satisfied with uh, the answers given by your French counterpart? And, uh, do you consider that France has clarified the security situation in the east of the country, such as uh, the Congolese demanded it? The second question is for President Macron. You are today in Kinshasa, in a country which is preparing for an important electoral deadline at the end of the year. Are you afraid, as your Minister of Foreign Affairs was able to declare in the past, that there is again an African compromise at the next election as was formulated during the victory of uh, Mr. Tshisekedi. And a very small last uh, additional question to Mr. Macron. You insisted a lot during your tour on the end of France-Africa or France-Africa. Your visit yesterday to Brazzaville and the image of the French president alongside your counterpart Sassou Nguesso have been interpreted by many as a form of relic of the past. Can we today say that reality imposes to maintain, to keep certain practices of the past? President Tshisekedi, thank you, ma'am. Uh, the announcements of the French president are, of course, are satisfactory, but are still on the theoretical level. We have to wait on the practical level. We thank France and Europe on the support are important to bring to our displaced, to our compatriots displaced by war. But here I must specify that I had made a proposal to accompany this aid to these displaced persons, which I have made earlier to President Macron. It was to provide rather aid for the return and not an help to remain in the infrahuman conditions that uh, these war, war displaced people live in at the moment. Return assistance will obviously have the advantage of bringing these displaced persons back to their usual place of residence but also of putting pressure on the process of implementing the peace process, that is, ceasefire and withdrawal, because when this population make the movement back to the place of uh, origin, the M23 terrorists will have to withdraw, and finally, something important, this will give the possibility this time to the Independent Electoral Commission to deploy these machines and uh, to deploy their machines and open its offices to register the voters because at the moment I remind you that we are already in the electoral process phase. The voters are already being enrolled. It is already done in the western part of the country. Currently, we are in the center part and in the east part. The only problem remains in the areas of unrest where we need peace to return to continue with the electoral process. Otherwise, we risk having a considerable delay which will impact on the date planned by the calendar. For the rest, it is, as I, as I said, as to see, especially at the level of the sanctions, because I remain skeptical about the good faith of those who attacked us because there was no reason which justified this aggression, if this is only for economic reasons, but specific to Rwanda, instigator of this aggression.
Ma the question is whether Rwanda can do without this systematic looting of the Democratic Republic of Congo, which now dates back 20 years. But if so, that it will be verified through this process. And if this is not the case, this is where I will check President Macron's commitments and remarks in relation to the sanctions to be taken against Rwanda and that must be specified. Thank you. Maybe I'll be very clear by saying that I explained France's position. You have made very clear about our humanitarian and political commitments including security, but it is not France that will provide the solution. I say it here with great clarity and humility, and I think it is also honesty and the condition for being happy. And if we expect too much from someone and we arrive there and we give the feeling that we can solve all the problems, it is not true. We will all end up unhappy. And I told the President, I support the process. I also trust the commitment of President Lorenzo. And I kind of hope not to have a list of sanctions because that would mean that the path will have been respected. I think everyone here in the room, that's what you prefer. This is what makes it possible to avoid war and to recover a situation of stability. Finally, on humanitarian issues, I would like to distinguish two things. There is the humanitarian bridge that we decided will finance in the short term, and it has to be done because we have to deliver medical equipment, which must open in emergency situations, and then there is the question of refugees, displaced persons. And I subscribe to what was said by the President, will accompany these movements of returns of the population towards these environments of origin, which have been liberated by the M23, and the question of setting up other refugees camp, this time on the Rwandan side. As for the upcoming elections, there is a timetable, there is a commitment. France has always been very clear that it is to say they too, if we want things to work, we must live with confidence and give ourselves the means of confidence so that there is a fair process, that there is an independent national commission which follows the process with questionable personalities from the political point of view and neutral. And there are, that there are systems for the organization of vote that meet the highest standards. That there are regional and international observers deployed everywhere and also with perhaps an association of religious communities so that in every local way there can be observations in all the polling stations and that there is a process of trust that is put in place. So I have confidence in that and I know how much President Tshisekedi with the fruit of the political alternation is attached to it and who is attached to a democratic neighborhood. I do not see why things can not happen in the better conditions. And the role of the international community is to provide the means for the good organization and all the rest. As for France, Africa, and the end of France, Africa, that you talked about, and the fact that there is no longer France, Africa, I'm not sure that we are in the best country to talk. It's not a way to discard myself, absolutely. But it's a reality, too. But what does that mean? That is to say that we assume everything and we are starting a new step. 
President Sassou Nguesso has been president for a very long time in this country. It is not France's choice, and it has been 14 years since a French president has been there. It is normal that this is not the choice of France because he is not a French president. So when you go to Brazzaville, and I think you should not humiliate anyone when you go on a, an international tour. It doesn't shock me personally that the French president meets a president from Congo. Well, there you go. After the question is what we say to him, it's not to serve him soup. So I gave him a speech, as I was already telling you on Monday, which is to build new partnerships. A policy for the climate and the environment that corresponds to our ambitions that we launched in the Libreville, Gabon. A new cultural policy in defending the artists, including the most uh, insolent and the most innovative. New partnerships in economic matters of small and medium-sized enterprises to further improve the inside and, and the business framework because it is not good today. So it's a demanding policy with a sincere future. future that, that's it. But if we put ourselves in a position where we say to ourselves that uh, wherever there are leaders who are not elected according to the best democratic standards that we like, or those who have been there for a long time, there is no longer any deployment of France to the partnership. Well, you'll be the first to explain to me that there is no longer any French policy at all and that there is no longer any presence of France. So we do, with the leaders we, are, we have, with respect, although the respect we owe both to President Sassou Nguesso and to his people, we do this by noting our agreements and our disagreements. But we do it by trying to build a policy for the future, by saying what is wrong when it is wrong, that's what I did yesterday. So I think it's consistent, but it is demanding. It is the fruit of, it is the very thing we are doing on the African continent. And I think it deserves it because it is a huge continent of the future with which we have a history, plural, if I can use this term, multiple, but it is a continent that I love. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Do you have uh, any reaction to the question that was asked? I wanted to react uh, to this question of the African style compromise, this little comment to say that this is precisely what must change in our relations with France in particular but with Europe in general, the West. Therefore, your way of seeing things when they happen in Africa, when there are irregularities in American election, we are not talking about an American type of compromise. When in France, several years ago now, during the Chirac years, when there were scandals about deceased voters, that uh, who had voted, we did not speak of a French type of uh, compromise. I believe that there should be respect in the consideration we have for each other. We have no intention of abusing the opinion of our voters. The electoral process has begun. We have sounded the alarm bell enough to say that if there is a risk of slippage, it is not because of the country's authorities or because of the Electoral Commission, but it is simply due to the fact that we are a country attacked by Rwanda, an aggression which resulted in a massive displacement of populations of voters who could currently be in the process of being enrolled, but who unfortunately cannot be enrolled because they are far from the base. And because of that, we risk being delayed in enlistment. If there is a delay in enlistment, there will be a delay in the vote 
on the law for the distribution of seats in Parliament because it is very important. It is in June that it must intervene so that we could then move forward as credible electoral process because at this stage I do not know how we are going to do it. Should the process be altered while waiting for peace to return to the East with the risk that this will affect compliance with the timetable, or should we should the process continue without taking into account the numerous populations displaced from war, that can pose a problem. If tomorrow we go to the elections in difficult conditions, we will then speak of an African compromise. Whereas until today, the, the same Africans are drawing your attention to this despicable and unjust aggression by Rwanda and even asking for sanction, nobody talks about it. This is what I wanted to bring to say that these two must change in the way of cooperating with France and Europe. Look at us differently by respecting us by considering aussi, us as real partners and not always with a paternalistic look with the idea of knowing what is good for us and not I think President uh, Macron has a reaction. <laughs> Macron. Yes. Despite the... If President Chisekedi allows me, I would like to bring a comment to the comment. Let me explain. First, it is good because there has been a lot of uh, misunderstanding behind this ping pong game. I would like you to know that uh, when there are electoral problems in the United States or in France, the French press talks about it. It denounces it, it explains it, it seizes it and it talks about it as intractably as when it talks about you. So there is no double standard. What would be worrying is if the French press did not talk about it for you, but it also talks about it for us, President Chisekedi, but it doesn't talk uh, about an African compromise. President Macron? No, no, but uh, it talks about everything, about uh, embezzlement when there is, and uh, a lot more. Even it even goes further. Even if there is no subject, it is trying to tell the truth. It is the job of uh, an independent press. So don't be shocked when the press gets echo, when it hears that uh, opposition is what uh, the opposition is saying, uh, that uh, there are problems, and ask you the question. So it will be a double standard when it says to itself, oh, this is Africa, we don't even need to ask the question, there is nothing here. So it asks the question, but it also does it with us when it hears that uh, there are political embezzlement and uh, it happens that with us and uh, I wouldn't want there to be any misunderstandings when I talk about this and uh, also when I refer to President Chirac, but there are trials that are done and there are people who are sentenced because there is an independent justice. So there is an independent judiciary and an independent press. It creates democracy that is uh, sometimes uh, uh, vibrant, and uh, I'm not saying that we get attacked, but uh, that's good. It allows democratic intervention and uh, to build the truth uh, through uh, this myotic. That's the first thing. Don't think there is a double standard. It's not true. Don't think it's disrespect. It's not true because French journalists, Europeans and uh, Americans ask the same question to their leader at home. The second thing, and this allows me to insist, because the president spoke uh, of France when uh, uh, answering the question. When a French journalist or journalist ask a question, a question, it is not the government of France. It is good like that. And we must not confuse everything. President, I was referring to the words of uh, Mr. Ledria, and is a French official. The African compromise is uh, Mr. Ladria, not the journalist. Applaud, President Macron. But Mr. President, this remark, we all know the electoral context in which it came out. There was no maliciousness in Mr. Ledrian's uh, formula. President Chisekedi, oh yes, oh yes. And uh, in Nairobi, moreover, and thanks to you, we have explained ourselves, President Macron. And France has also worked a lot, oh, you know how much, 
for there to be an alternation and which until then would have not been a spontaneous uh, mechanism. I close this parenthesis, but uh, I wanted uh, to make this uh, clarification. Sorry. The journalist. Thank you very much. A very nice exchange. Smile. Believe, I believe we are going to shorten the Q&A phase. I believe we have two more left. And so on.